This week on This is America and the World, we conclude our two-part conversation with Sadiq Abu Bakr Y, ambassador from the Republic of Sierra Leone to the United States. Educated at Fordham University and New York University, Ambassador Wise spent more than 20 years in service in New York City as former Deputy Director at New York University's Institute of African American Affairs, Community Affairs Analyst and Advisor to New York City's Police Department, and President of the United African Congress. Partnership, but also investment, as opposed to exploitation. Uh, that's, 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 that has been one of the challenges, not only in Israel, but many African countries. Yeah. So now uh, we have very, very bright, very, very knowledgeable people mm -hmm. who understand this industry. Some of them have studied in the best universities here in Britain. They know how to negotiate. All we are saying, let us work together. Mm -hmm. Help us develop. We don't mind you making a profit. Mm -hmm. But don't forget where that profit origin is coming from. And I would uh, bet that the rules of the game have changed. Oh, under <laughs> President Madabu, they have changed. But we are not totally there yet. But I always say it's working progress. And the, uh, the investors understand uh, what his vision is. And he's fair. Mm. He's fair. Let me ask a broader question. Mm -hmm. What drives, you mentioned uh, minerals, and we'll talk about that in a second. Iron, we just talked about. Gold, you mentioned. What drives the economy, uh, basically, in well, Sierra Leone? Right now, the president, as I said, he has three core priorities. Mm -hmm. One education, mm -hmm. two, health, and three, agriculture. Mm -hmm. Agriculture is what the president hopes in his next administration would be the game changer uh -huh. Uh -huh. in our country. There's a tremendous amount of uh, uh, heavy investment in that area with development partners. As a matter of fact, there's a Tomabon project in Sierra Leone. And those projects have also become the largest employers that provide opportunities. Uh -huh. And there are now women that are also involved in agriculture to be able to plant rice and sell them on the market. There are rice mills now in many parts of the country because everything over the last many years coming to Sierra Leone in the area of, particularly the area of rice, the price of rice goes up. Mm. But we used to be an exporter of rice. So the president's saying clearly, we should not be buying rice, spending over $200 million a year on rice. To buy. Yes. Yeah. We should grow our own rice. Mm -hmm. And here's the, the clincher. The president himself is a farmer. Uh -huh. There are several members of uh, ministers in government who have their own farms. Because agriculture is very, very important. If you look at what is happening now uh, in Ukraine, it has an impact on our... Uh, 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 our, uh, our, our agricultural uh, processes because, you know, you, you want to have fertilizers. But all of this, even as a small country, it affects our agriculture. So we have uh, agriculture, mining, um, iron, gold, mm -hmm. uh, Tourism, is that big? Yes, it? well, I mean, tourism is a very big part of our country. So if I come 
How do we get there, first of all? How do oh. we, out of Washington, how do we get well, there? Well, let me, let me tell you, Sierra Leone is the only country on the face of the planet that you need three modes of transportation. Uh -huh. You fly, yeah. you take a boat, and a car to your destination. Okay. So you fly, you walk through the Atlantic, until <laughs> you get to a place. But I tell you, it is all very, very, uh, you will enjoy, you will enjoy it. Because when I go home, I, you fly from, if you fly from Washington, D.C., you could go through Paris or you go to London or you go to Brussels and then from Brussels right into Freetown. Uh -huh. oh, by the way, under this president's initiative, they have just near completion of an international airport. Mm -hmm. State of the art. Escalators. People were saying, oh my God, this is, <laughs> this is amazing. So I hope I can lead you, take you on your whole team to come to Sierra Leone. We want to And come. we would love to have one of your annual conferences. Mm. Seriously to take place on the continent of Africa. Yes, yes. Because you, as members of the fifth X state, you need to connect with journalists on the ground. Mm. They need you. You also need them. With the digital mm -hmm. technology today, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you could do it by Zoom. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing better be there, being there face to face. And the country is so hospitable. I mean, if you, as a leading person in the media in the United States, tells me, Ambassador, we want to take a trip to go see Sierra Leone. We are considering having our annual uh, media conference in Sierra Leone. Wow. I will tell you, I will hold your bag. <laughs> Not necessarily ambassador, but thank you for the invitation. Let me let me let me just tell the folks at home. They are so privileged as I am to be sitting in on this conversation uh, with you. Thank you, ambassador. Uh, for the folks at home, we are talking with the ambassador here at the embassy here in Washington with the ambassador uh, from Sierra Leone. Uh, what an education. Uh, uh, what a warm and wonderful, uh, gracious uh, uh, time of hospitality for me and our, our crew. Uh, let's take a little break. Uh, back on the other side, we want to talk about Africa, okay. a bigger picture, okay? okay. And I'm, I'm going to ask you, when you look at Africa, what do you see? Okay. Okay? Okay. I'll take a little break. Back on the other side, this is America and the world. This is America and the World is made possible by the Japan America Society of Washington, D.C. 21st Century Citizenship, the Frank Islam and Debbie Dreisman Foundation, the Republic of Uzbekistan, the Sultanate of Oman, the Kingdom of Morocco. The Forerunner Foundation. The Rotondaro Family Trust. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy. Mr. Ambassador. Yes, sir. As I teased as we were going to uh, the break to uh, thank our sponsors and underwriters, when you look at Africa, what do you see? That is a very, very good question. I see an Africa that is within the next maybe 10 years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. producing the largest number of youths 
in terms of population. Mm. Young people? Yes, young people. So what I see there, our leaders have to be ready and to make, to include these young people in national development. I see that as a challenge in Africa. Mm -hmm. What do I also see in Africa? I see an Africa that has, the leaders have come together to creating the Africa free trade, making once that is enacted as the largest free trading zone in the world. Mm. What does that mean? It means people who are looking to investing safely now have an alternative. It's not just Europe now. Mm -hmm. Africa, I see Africa as a new frontier mm -hmm. to promote investment, to promote trade. And I also see an Africa, maybe not in my lifetime, as a united and single continent, just like you have continental USA. There are movements taking place all across Africa today. Mm -hmm. Because when you look, if you leave Sierra Leone, you go to Liberia. The same language that is spoken in Liberia is spoken in Sierra Leone. If you go to Ivory Coast, you go to Guinea, you go all of them. My wish is to see African leaders removing the colonial barriers mm. and understanding that together as a United States of Africa, they have the most significant game-changing impact not only in the continent, but around the world. Will be bringing those resources. You see some, some countries, they, about, they don't have a military. They don't have their infrastructure challenges. They don't have an air force. Mm -hmm. But you see people struggling. If you look at Somalia, all of these entities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see an Africa that someday the leaders will understand that they have more by them coming together than being divided. President Biden just had the White House uh, summit on Africa here in Washington not long ago. Was that a success? Uh, how did you size it up? Well, I have to give credit to where credit is due. The Biden administration, State Department, White House, and all of these wonderful people did a phenomenal job. It wasn't easy. It's not even easy to bring, to invite four heads of state. There were 50 heads of states from Africa, 300 companies. What I took away from that, and I give the credit to President Biden and his administration, the United States wanted to reset the relationship button between Africa and the United States. He succeeded in doing that. Mm. In everything that we do, you have to talk to people. You have to have a dialogue. He created through the summit 
an opportunity for even African leaders to come together and talk to each other. <laughs> and he also provided the opportunity for all of his top agencies, cabinet ministers, cabinet secretaries, congressional members, members of Congress, to come under one roof to talk. Mm -hmm. Investors to talk about business. If anything, if you look at which you, you and I know, to meet a corporate CEO from a small country, you want to make an appointment to see them? You have to go through hoops. President Biden made that possible for them. Well, does that mean that is the end of it? No. But here is what I absolutely think is important in all of this. The president, in his infinite wisdom, has decided to pull together an African Diaspora Advisory Commission. Mm -hmm consisting of 12 people. What I would strongly urge the organizers of this commission is to make sure that the African diaspora constituencies in these United States, not forgetting the African Americans, not forgetting the Caribbeans, are part of that commission mm -hmm. because there's another important dialogue that needs to take place between those constituencies. African leaders also want to have an direct and effective engagement with the legislators here. Mm -hmm. I believe this process has laid the foundation. And I could say this from my own life in this country, I will single out my friend and brother, the former chair, now the ranking member of the House Foreign Relations Committee, Honorable Gregory Meeks. Mm -hmm. Gregory Meeks' DNA is like mine. He's from Sierra Leone. He's Mende. He led the largest contingency of members of the Black Congressional Caucus to Sierra Leone mm. in February last year to meet, and this is important for your viewers to know, they did not just meet with the president and his government. They met with opposition leaders. They met with civil society. They met with NGOs. This was a proud moment for our country. And the president of the Republic of Sierra Leone was gracious enough to host the biggest welcome for these legislators. Many of them, that was the first time they've been to Sierra Leone. Were they impressed? They were absolutely impressed. And that Gregory Meeks was crowned paramount chief in Sierra Leone cultural performances. It was, it was a, it, it, it was a night, a day, two days that our country would never forget. You were born and raised in Sierra Leone. How did you end up in New York at Fordham <laughs> and New York University? <laughs> huh? Well, this is, this is one of the biggest stories that I talk about the blessing that this country and the opportunities that this country provides. I left my country as a young man. I was born in the North, to Timini and Limba. And my father comes from the South, which is Mende. So I come from two ruling houses, and I come from two dominant tribes in that country. So, leaving there, coming to the United States with $5 in my pocket, mm. I came here with a dream that 
contrary to what I read in the papers, in the books, that I wanted to come to one of the greatest democracies on the face of the earth to learn. And thanks to America, they gave me that opportunity. I went to Fordham, I went to NYU. I became the first African born to run for the office of public advocate in the city of New York. I was a citizen, but I had to give that up to become an ambassador. Mm. So I always say, I'm the luckiest ambassador here who has two countries, the United States and the Republic of Sierra Leone. And that relationship, when I came, walking the streets, understanding the government as how things work, having worked as the highest ranking immigrant in the New York City Police Department. Well, you just saw this big case that they cracked down uh, in Memphis, Tennessee, that way. I was the guy that recommended mm -hmm. the establishment of the body cameras in the United States. It wasn't done by a cop. I was a civilian under Raymond Kelly the first legislator to provide funding for the pilot initiative of those body cameras was the, honor, the current attorney general of the state of New York, Honorable Letitia James. Aha. Uh -huh. 20 years of service in New York, police department, African Congress, United Nations, Department of Health and Human Services. Homeland Security. Homeland Security. What do you take away from it all? Now sitting as ambassador from Sierra Leone to the United States, what message as we come to the end of our time do you want our viewers to know? I mean, if they have been listening to us, they can judge you as enthusiastic, warm, generous, educated, so sold on your country, investment there. What do you want us to know? All of this, my good friend, I want my community, my country, this country to know that you cannot do any of this without relationships. Through these relationships, people of goodwill in this country gave me the opportunity to participate. This country gave me an education. This country gave me the tools that I need to use even in my diplomatic world, to the point that my colleagues, my 54 colleagues in the African Diplomatic Corps fondly refer to me as the 911. Why? Because I have built a credible base of relationships that extends beyond just my country but to my family and also to Africa. So I'm grateful. I'm eternally grateful to the United States for giving me the privilege to serve my country. Mm. And I hope and pray that that relationship in promoting our bilateral relationship and look at you, one of the best decision, I mean, influencers in this country. A small me. I'm sitting down talking to millions of your people. That is a blessing. And that, again, would never have happened if I did not have a relationship with you to come to your place. So I'm 
eternally grateful that we will continue to make, to promote the bilateral relationship between the United States of America and the Republic of Sierra Leone. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for the education. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank you very much. Thank you. It is a pleasure. Thank you. Ambassador. Appreciate it. Thank you. For information about This Is America in the World, visit our YouTube channel, This Is America TV. Visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can listen to all of our Ambassador interviews on our podcast, The Ambassador Series. It's available on our website and iTunes. This is America and the World is made possible by the Japan America Society of Washington, D.C. 21st Century Citizenship, the Frank Islam and Debbie Dreisman Foundation, the Republic of Uzbekistan, the Sultanate of Oman, the Kingdom of Morocco. The Forerunner Foundation. The Rotondaro Family Trust. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy. Mm -hmm.